and the majority of the exam is on oscillations and waves. So, well, what do you remember about oscillations? What did we cover as we are, what did we bring up as we were talking about oscillations and waves? Did they cover nothing new? I guess we could go in order of how we covered it, but I think I, it's a better to, um, because this is exam review, not introduction of topics, it's better to cover in terms of things that are, I guess, more memorable, and actually, hopefully more memorable because it's <laughs> important. Uh, let's uh, focus on oscillation. What do you remember about oscillation? What I don't know, key terms or concepts do you remember being introduced as we are talking about oscillation? Steven, see here. Hmm? Yeah, angular frequency is actually a big part. So let me just write that down as one. And there are several things you can bring up as we are talking about angular frequency. Um, let me actually uh, talk about this in a way that maybe wasn't what Stephen was going to mention. This can be a jumping off point for a bunch of vocabulary terms that you should know. What's uh, most closely related to angular frequency omega? Like what's uh, another quantity that's most closely related to angular frequency? Frequency, yeah, you just take off angular and then you have frequency. So frequency is related to angular frequency and you should remember all these relationships because the idea is that the question might give you an information in any of these related quantities and you'll have to be able to work it back to angular frequency. So frequency would be usually use letter F and that's equal to angular frequency divided by two pi or angular frequency is frequency times 2 pi. What else is related to angular frequency or frequency? Time. Time. Amount of time, there was actual word for that. Period. Yeah, period. So we define period in connection with the angular frequency and frequency. So that would be, um, I don't know, I go back and forth between using capital T and P. Uh, let me use capital T. So period is one over frequency. Um, any other vocabulary terms that are directly related to this, any of these three? Amplitude. Uh, amplitude, it does come up with oscillation, but it's uh, independent of angular frequency. Lambda so we, we, let's uh, handle amplitude first. Let me write it down, we are gonna come back to it. So let me write down amplitude here. But amplitude has nothing to do with the angular frequency. In fact, that was one of the big thing about simple harmonic oscillator motion, right? For simple harmonic oscillator motion, what happens to angular frequency as you change the amplitude? Abdi? So imagine a so pendulum is a kind of a simple harmonic oscillator motion. You know, it has a kind of angular frequency of motion. If I increase the amplitude, what happens to the angular frequency of motion? So this may sound like a trick question, but if you are prepared, it should not be a trick question. Anybody can answer? How is amplitude of simple harmonic oscillator related to frequency of, or angular frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator? Yes, Stephen? Yeah, they are not related. That's really the thing. Uh, if you're looking at how fast it's moving, then they are related, of course. But if you're looking at the frequency of motion, they are not related. In fact, so that's one of the things you should do, uh, now the, the other set of things you should know about angular frequency which are the uh, formulas we derived um, by application of math. The, uh, the two biggest set of formulas you should really memorize, have in your formula sheet, are the natural frequency of oscillation for meson, spring, and pendulum. So um, natural frequency 
or natural, I guess it should be natural, angular frequency of oscillation are for uh, meson spring. So this is a specific to the system you are talking about. If it's a meson spring, then this was the formula. Square root of k over n. And I think we did a pendulum one, right? So if it's pendulum, it should be um, square root of g over l. Okay. Like these are formulas that, that are useful enough that you should have them memorized, or at a minimum of having your formula sheet. And what these formulas are telling you is that the kind of things that determine the oscillation frequency of a simple harmonic oscillator is that it's a, just a fixed property of the setup. Spring constant, mass of the mass, uh, gravitational acceleration, and length of the simple pendulum. Like amplitude does not occur in it at all anywhere. Okay. So um, where would you uh, be concerned with the amplitude then? What kind of things is amplitude related to? I mean, everyone here knows the definition of amplitude, right? How much it's being displaced. What other physical quantities does, can you relate amplitude to other than displacement? So, oh, so with the pendulum, so you are seeing that as it swings, its height changes, right? So that will relate to a particular physical quantity because it's not always going to be height. If it's a mass on a spring that's a horizontal, then as it oscillates, height won't be changing. But there is some kind of physical quantity that's always associated in some way with amplitude. Uh, Isha? Maximum velocity is one. Um, I want to get at a more central idea here, though. So it'll eventually relate to maximum velocity through this. So I guess I could, uh, so I could write uh, maximum velocity down here. But I want to um, max velocity. I want you to have a key to the the most important quantity that relates directly to amplitude, or most closely with amplitude. Energy. energy. So simple harmonic oscillation motion happens in a situation where energy is conserved. Amplitude describes maximum displacement. So this is the position where velocity is zero. Uh, kinetic energy is zero. This is the position where you have maximum potential energy. So as it oscillates, because energy is conserved, this potential energy changes to kinetic, back to potential, back to kinetic, back to potential. So, so you should remember the relationship, um, how energy is related to oscillation. So I'll just say amplitude um, relates to potential but what I'm going to use this as a platform to mention is really you need to be familiar with energy in oscillation. How to express it, how it's expressed. It's kind of a review of what you have done for exam two. You know, if it's a mass on a spring, then it's a, you know, spring potential energy. If it's pendulum, then you have to work out all the geometry stuff to, uh, I probably won't give that, I don't know. Um, but um, if, uh, in an honors class, you might have done that. But so if we wanted of all the things we introduced to dealing with oscillation, if we had to pick out one thing that relates most of directly to energy, then it's going to be amplitude. Right? Uh, okay, I gotta hurry up because I'm kind of running out of time. One um, very important aspect of oscillation and waves that you cannot forget, that you have to review, you have to make sure that you are not uh, leaving behind, is um, it's the mathematical representation. So we talked about mathematical representation of um, oscillations and mathematical representation of waves. So um, you need to be familiar with those mathematical representations. So um, for example, if you're dealing with a wave, you might see something like this, uh, not wave, if you're dealing with oscillation, let's say oscillation of a mass on a spring moving up and down, then we could describe height of that mass as a function of time. 
And if I do that, I'm going to get an expression that looks like this. Let me write down all the different cons constant parameters in different color. So cosine is just a function, and time is a variable. So all those will be there, and plus. Uh, let me write down some of the important constant parameters in different colors. Amplitude is one of them. You need to know how to find the amplitude of some oscillation. Um, angular frequency is another one. Given some sufficient information about the setup, you need to know how to find the angular frequency. And phase factor is the final one. Um, once again, given enough information, you need to know how to find the phase factor. There was actually a portable TA question in your homework that was actually walking through this exactly. I want you to know how to do it. I will test you at some point. If not exam three, then final exam. Um, because you know, a good deal of what we do in this class is helping you make a sense of mathematical expression. Because in my experience, very few people learn to do that in their math classes. I wish you did it in math class, but if you didn't do it in your math class, you should do it at least here. Um, so you know, when you have this expression written down, it's uh, really easy to lose the meaning of what each of these have. And I want you to know what, how to find each of these, relate them to some physical aspect of the setup. And once you have this, then know how to use it. You know, use this to find the velocity, acceleration, that sort of stuff. And there will also, there's also the mathematical representation of wave. So this was for simple harmonic oscillator, and you do also have to know it for wave. So uh, for wave, I'll just write it down. I'm running out of time. So uh, wa wave is going to be a function of position and time. And um, I guess for the mathematical representation, to, at least to start, I want you to focus on the traveling periodic waves. Because with the traveling periodic waves, I can put it in a very particular standard form where you should know meaning of each of these colored parts. So let me write it out. So this function is going to be equal to some amplitude, I'll write it later, times some trigonometric function, cosine of. And then it's going to be a function of position um, and time. Um, and there may be a phase factor. So let me put in all the important or quantities that have a particular physical meaning into colors. I hope I have enough. So let's just start out with amplitude. Um, you need to be able to associate that with something. Um, uh, let me do omega in the same color. So there's angular frequency omega um, or frequency. Um, you need to be able to relate that to something. And we have a new quantity. Uh, let me do that in blue. Um, wave number k. You need to be able to relate to the other information that's given in the problem. Um, and you have the phase factor. Oops, I already used the black. Let me do purple for phase factor. And uh, there's one final aspect of all of this. The relationship between these two can be either minus or plus. You should know physical meaning for either of these two signs. So you know it's uh, all in one single expression. And with the waves and oscillation, one single expression can pack a lot of information there. All right, so I have less than a minute left. So let me just write down the remainder of formulas that uh, you have seen me lecture. And um, you should know. So you should know this relationship. The wave speed is equal to um, wavelength times frequency, right? I think we spent some time on that. And here's something that I don't think we spent a lot of time on, but um, it's a formula that I want you to know anyway. This is the part that I was hoping to get to today, but ran out of time. We can't get to it. Um, so what do you remember about wave speed? Do you remember something about wave speed? What we mentioned about wave speed? It's a, some kind of constant, right? It's a property of medium. 
it uh, um, said it here. It's property of medium. And what I want you to know in addition to that is how it is determined by the properties of the medium. So um, there aren't that many formulas for wave speed that I would want you to know. The one formula I want you to know is the wave speed for a wave on a string. And the formula for that is the square root of tension over linear mass density. There were some homework questions where you, there should have been homework questions where you had to know this to uh, work out the rest. So you can look in the textbook for the derivation of this formula. Uh, this was the formula I was hoping to derive today, but ran out of time. Um, but, uh, so this is one formula you should know. Um, in other circumstances, it's good enough for you to know that, remember the wave speed is property of the medium, and I kind of have to tell you what that wave speed is. Um, so wave on a string is one exception where I might give you the tension and the linear mass density, and I would expect you to know to figure it out. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, I almost forgot to mention the most important um, thing that we just covered today: uh, wave interference phenomena. So you should be familiar with the phenomena. You should be familiar with the details of standing wave and beat. These are the two um, wave interference phenomena, either in one dimensions or zero dimensions. Um, portable TA will have some examples of wave interference in, in 2D. Uh, we are not doing any of that in this class. You'll do wave interference in 2D in physics 4C if you take that. So, um, but, um, so with the waves, this is the, the actually, <laughs> this is the biggest part of waves, um, uh, right alongside the mathematical representation of wave. Good, any questions? Okay, what did I forget? Let's make sure I didn't forget anything important. Um, Oh yeah, I didn't mention all the vocabulary word, like wavelength and wave number. But feel familiar enough for those. Um, yeah, oh, with the standing wave, there are you know, nodes and antinodes. <laughs> um, so this is a whole like a case study topic. So make sure you read the relevant sections and <laughs> you um, are not left empty. Um, all right, any questions, comments? 